looked in public when I heard such utterances. I said, my God, the only thing I can say as the regional commissioner is amen. Amen. This is the background that we are talking about. Yes, some people would be rolling their eyes thinking, Come on, how, what are you trying to address here? You see, when you talk about the United States of America, politics is all about the art of the possible. But when you talk about developing countries like Tanzania, Malawi, Zambia, politics there is all about the allocation of resources. You, you, you can't go to Sweden and say, if you employ me, if you take me as a member of parliament or a councillor, I'm going to bring you a health center. They'll say we have a lot of them. Some of them are not functioning because we, we don't have anybody. We, education has gone to the our local people, they know. If we say that I'm going to bring you an ambulance, they'll just laugh at you. I'm going to bring you electricity, they'll say, what are you talking about, you men? You can talk about the environmental pollution, you can talk about labor organizations, you can talk about all this kind of a thing, but you can't talk about these things. That is the background that we are talking about. It might sound irrelevant to some of you guys, but that is where we belong to and that is where we're coming from. So what we're saying here is that, what you would say, what, what are the efforts that have been put across, around, so much so that you get out of that. You want to talk about industrial development in Tanzania, but you don't have mechanized agriculture in Tanzania. You want to come out along with some industries, that's what I said yesterday. And you cannot produce, you cannot have tomatoes, you cannot have uh, cotton, you can't have tobacco and all this, you don't have coffee. You, may, you know what I'm talking about. And you're saying that you are coming out with the agricultural development in your area. And you say, supposing it doesn't rain, what are you going to do? I say, I'm going to pray God. What are you going to say? No insurance uh, authority is going to provide you with a loan or anything that goes in the name of what we're discussing here. If you cannot show them how to go farm, just in case it doesn't rain. Come on, guys. Let's get down to earth. I say it, the Constitution provides, the law provides that we have local government. What we need to do is to, maintain, to, to change the mentality of our people. I was reading a book from Ghana. Ghana and I was going through literature, uh, Donald. And someone wrote something very interesting, which I thought at least out of this confusion I've talked about, because I, I couldn't understand the question. Someone was saying, Koba, you went into a shop whereby they were selling brains. And then they had some shelves, four of them. The first shelf was with the brains that uh, innovated and brought about rockets, aeroplanes, and satellites. The second shelf had some brains whereby they had a transportation system, whereby, and all this, mainly Barbara. And the third one was about cities that we were talking about yesterday. And the fourth one was the shelf that was selling brains, which have not been used. And if they want to come out with a road or even a school, they have to employ some TXs, some experts from outside. That man said, oh, very interesting. So how much is the first brain? I said, the first three I've just mentioned here, are affordable. We can negotiate, and you can get, you can, we can negotiate, you, I'll give it. I said, why? I said, because this already used the brains. So this is Nimtumba, who Nimtumba? You know Nimtumba? The fourth one is the most expensive brain. I said, well, but you say this brain is the brain that is being sold from countries whereby they can't develop even their own roads, they can't develop their own uh, systems. And then he answered, <laughs> the, the first three brains are almost expired. The fourth one is not yet used. The three of them are already used. That's why the fourth brain is so expensive because it's not used. It's a brand new brain. Those are the brains we have in most developing countries and in Africa. 
We have educated a number of people in our country. UDOM is now producing almost 40,000 students. We have people coming from the University of Dar es Salaam, and we have some professors here. And you know for sure, Komba, this time we are thinking, we, 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 I mean it was in the law, Komba, we have, we have extended even their period of, uh, of, of employment to, to 65 years, you see, because we still have that potential. So what is the problem with developing countries? Because we're talking about, uh, I said I'm talking about the border. Now you, you see, I'm just confusing myself. I'm talking about mm -hmm. developing countries, you see. <laughs> the brains have not been utilized. And that's the poor is calling us here so much so that we know of the potential that we have, so that they could be taken back home. Right now, I'm talking about those people in the diaspora, in Tabora, and I'm calling upon them to come back home. Coming back home does not necessarily mean come, but you have some people physically coming back to Tabora, but tilt your brain a bit. And this is the message that we're giving to our local young people, to our communities. We need to have some vibrant leaders, people who can show us the way, people who can tell people, come by, where were you? If you want to come out with a small industry, what you need to do is just to have your labor power around there, and then you can manage the situation. Marx was talking about Latifundia mode of production, Asiatic mode of production, Germanic mode of production. Dahashi Sakashiro was talking about more of and then here yeah, we're talking about economic social formations. Like we want to come out with those formations whereby at least you can transform our people in terms of thinking. Thinking abroadly. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Honorable Sorry. Manri. Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Ave Maria Semakafu, and uh, I want to contribute because I'm sure we are all here participants and we didn't come with our credentials as participants. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what I wanted to comment is uh, on uh, the the potentials that uh, the local governments uh, are and the snags because for me i support what uh, what uh, the first panelist said we have our youth during our days in fact we were entering contract with the government that after completion you must work for government for at least six years minimum and if you don't report they were following you and the people who were the mini but again, we are talking about development, and this one, I find almost all my colleagues are silent about it. Mm -hmm. When we are talking about development, it means we are replacing human labor. In the past, we used to hire people to come and uh, cultivate, and therefore, even in the villages, when I have a farm, then it means the youth around there will get employment right there in the village because I'll be hiring them. If you cultivate one, uh, one acre, I pay you 70,000 shillings and things like that. But right now, with mechanization, I use tractor. To cultivate one acre is 5,000 shillings. So those youth who are around there, officially or somehow they are being expelled from the villages to come to town. And this is the challenge which we really need to, uh, to, to address, rather than just talking about unemployment, unemployment, you know, right now, unemployment is increasing. Yes, it will increase as long as technology keeps on advancing. There is a very, uh, you know, in the social media, there is a clip on the Sukumas. One of them, Anapiga Kidude, and Aimba, others are cultivating. T -t 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 -t, I think you understand, we all keep on joking about it. But for me, I use that to teach the youth. 
You see all these young people in the village. They used to get employed. This is my farm. I'll bring someone here, cultivate, and then I pay. But right now, who will invite the sukumas to go and cultivate in their farm? So literally, we need a new thinking about the word employment. And therefore, I connect with my colleague who said that he's an expert for the local government. You say that there are no opportunities there. And when he was talking about employment, I found him talking about professionals. Talking about doctors, you know it is the, the council which is supposed to employ and whatnot. So we are really, when we are talking about uh, employment, we are all kind of uh, being remanded within the formal sector. And we forget completely about the opportunities that do exist within our system. So um, it might be true. What we know uh, when we discuss the way forward, maybe I will share with that one because I'm coming from the education sector mm -hmm. and I've seen this snag because you send an opportunity to the district, but they say, unless you give us money, we will not explore this one. We have that thing. So literally, we have some things which we really need to, uh, to address. Yes, we have decentralization, and it is only decentralization that will work. But what exactly is decentralization? Is it replacing the sectoral ministry by the ministry of uh, local government? Because that, to me, will be more centralization. That is number one. Number two, when we are talking about decentralization by devolution, it is the way it is written, it is supposed to start from the villages, mm -hmm. then to the ward, and then to go and make the decision be made at the district, uh, at the council level. But what is it that is happening? We found that the professionals at the district have hijacked that process because of the capacity of that process. Right now, you go to the villages, they are complaining. Whatever we say, it is our priority. When it goes to council, it is not the priority of our area. But when you ask even those councillors, they say, my dear, when we prepare our priorities, then you find that dad comes and say, you know, we have the priority from the Minister of Local Government. So this one is not your priority. So I think there is a problem there. But again, the third one, uh, I'm talking about now the profession. Looking at the nature of our leaders at the local level. You want to give them the mandate to hire and fire a medical doctor, a specialist, a surgeon, without the hand of the central body. Believe me, we want to kill our nation. And I really appreciate yesterday uh, Dr. Mushi said, yes, we are talking about decentralization, but not everything will be, is supposed to go down there. You look at the environment and then you make decision. So you say this is a surgeon. This is orthopedic surgeon. This is, I don't know, whatever. And then you want that counselor, a class seven liver, thank God, to come and say, this is what I want and this is not what I want. I remember it happened in Kiela. The district said, you know, the council said, we don't want the DMO. We just don't want him. You understand? And then it had to, you know, the government, the central government had to intervene. And this is the reason why we say these specialized things, you cannot just let us look at the environment and then make a decision. This is the right thing. Let us be very frank. And again, on the system, it is true. You keep on saying they are not there, but that was the mistake, omission. Because the regional secretariat was supposed to be the link between the sectoral ministries and the local government. Right now in Tanzania, we have only one curriculum prepared by Thai. We have only one exam for the whole, at least I'm talking about basic education, by Nectar. Now, when you say that you want to give local government mandate to hire and whatever and to engage with anybody, we had a problem. Some, you know, three or four district regions here decided to enter into agreement that for them, they are going to be supported so that their children in schools can be taught about reading and writing, no mathematics. 
while the national strategy is reading the three R, but for them it was two R, we had to intervene. So will you say that uh, the central government uh, is doing nothing, is not supposed to be there and whatever? Let us look about the reality and then let us decide. We are supposed, because for me decentralization is a process. Let us go step by step while we correct the background, while we empower our machineries and uh, human resource, and then we keep on adding. I, th I think it was right for the government to decide that the water engineers to go back to the sectoral ministry. It was right, again, to draw a line when we are talking about land, all land to belong to where they are. Because they went, they sold, you know, even... Uh, because once they receive the money down there, we want more revenues. The madiwani, unawajua, tunataka. So, tunataka msitu ugawa viwanja. If you don't, tunakufaya. You understand? We are firing you today. So, it was really like a chaos. So, for me, I think, let us take it as a, a, as a process. But again, I really congratulate Repoa because this is really a hot soup right now, uh, a hot topic which we need to discuss and uh, kind of uh, try to suggest a way forward. The linkage between the local government and the central government, especially the, the key sectors, you know, because others, when it comes to implementation, it's okay. But literally, we need to see that we have this smooth transition. Everybody right now is praising Tarura. But when you go down there, hey, the Madiwanis and Watendaji and the, some of the dead are complaining because that was the money which they used to eat. This is money for local roads and whatever. When it comes, eh, hey, Kampuni Anani, Daddy nae kasha tengeneza ya kwake kushirikiana na mwenye kiti wa cancel. Ehe. And then, okay, paka, 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 nyingine zote. Shh. But right now, we see changes. So let us agree that we really need to go step by step. Unae mwita mwenye kiti wa cancel. Ivi anawezo watawa kuchambua bajeti. Au ndo hile unamhonga trip. Kwamba anakuenda kwenye tripu za ujirani mwema. Kweli ni sidanganya. Madedi wote wenye walio tulia, wanakula na wenye viti wa cancel. Na wengine, hawana uwezo. Ndiyo mana se, central government ikisha na mwenye sekta ya kiona mambo magumu. Anakuenda kuda, naomba sekta yangu irudi na afwa. Because we were supposed really to go right there. Na tujaribu kuangalia hii right to hire and fire. Wanapewa wale madiwani. Ye, inatija. Thank you. Thank you, Avemalia Semakafu. We have Semakaf. Okay. <laughs> Another question there. Good morning to you. Uh, my name is Albert Murray. Yes. I'm coming from Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology, uh, Mwanza Campus. This is a training institution focusing on uh, leather technology programs throughout the leather value chain. Mine is not a question as such, but it's just a comment. And I think it goes across all the panelists. And uh, this is the uh, exploitation or trying to see how we can work out with the existing uh, resources as well as involvement of academia. I'll give you a live example. If you do the mapping of livestock population in Tanzania, you'll see that most of the livestock are concentrated along the lake zone. But it is very unfortunate we don't have a milk factory along the lake Victoria, I mean lake zone. We have Tanga Fresh. Tanga Fresh is far, almost 1,000 kilometers all the way from Mwanza. Does it mean all this, the local government, whatever, haven't seen this potential? Huh? You are moving from Mwanza, Shinyanga, across uh, Mr. Agremwandri's region, Tabora, Singida, Dodoma, Manyara, and then you are making milk from Tanga, and then at the end of the day, the milk goes back to Lexon. We are not creating this, we are not making good use of this potential. That's number one. Number two, 
we don't go along the value chain of our resources. For example, in all regions, we do eat meat. That's the um, meat industry. Why don't we go for the byproducts? One of the byproducts is hides and skins. If you process a hide, I mean from the hide to finished leather, and from leather to, let's say, footwear, one cow can make three pairs of shoes. And one pair of shoe involves five people. That's the process. So you can see there's an opportunity of having employment. Coming to Dar es Salaam, where we are, in a daily basis, they slaughter around 800, I think, cows per day. So if it is 800, you multiply by three, this is 2,400 pairs of shoes per day. The consumption and the production of footwears in one year in Tanzania is around 10 million. But the consumption is 50 million per year. So there's a gap of around um, 40 right, million pairs of shoes. This is an opportunity. This is economic avenue, which we can quickly jump into it. I have a lot of examples, but the time is not with me. But just to wind up, yesterday I was talking to Linda. And we were talking about uh, the Bahi people, right? And they have got slaughterhouses, but they don't know where to take the highs and skins. I said to her, please introduce the Bahi people to DIT Mwanza campus, where we do offer training in how to process hides and skins to finish leather at family level, even at whatever level, we are the trainers. So the South African gentleman there said as follows, we should also involve academic, uh, academia in mm -hmm. all this process. Thank you. Before you sit, can I have your name again? My Albert name Murray. is Albert Murray. Okay, Albert. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lady, Linda, behind you. Thank you. Yes, my name is uh, Linda Helges Nsike. I'm the country director for NIRAS, Tanzania. Mm -hmm. um, I just have um, a comment and a question for it. I think it can be addressed to all of you. Yeah. And I think we have heard a lot today about what we can do, and we have also heard where we came from. But I believe also in learning from the example. And uh, we have a lot of example, I'm sure, from all, all of you in the panel, of what, what are we doing today to promote local economic development? Mm -hmm. And perhaps to be specific, if you could take the example of the development funds that we've been discussing. So we have the 10% the it's for, for, for youth women and uh, people with disability. Mm -hmm. So in your regions, in your LGAs, how are you handling this matter? Because I think we can, it's, it's easy to complain and we, it's mm. easy also, to, also to, to discuss what we can do, but what are we doing right now? What are the examples that you would like to share with us that we can say, okay, that sounds interesting. Let me, let me link up with you and let me um, uh, do something similar where, where I live. Maybe we should resp respond first and then we We'll finish with another round of questions. Oh, you want more questions? Okay. okay. Yeah. Mr. Kimei. Dr. Kimei. Thank you very much, I'm Mr. Kimei. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, thank you very much. I, my feeling is that um, we all know that um, 
agriculture is still, or land is the, 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 the most important endowment at the local level. Mm -hmm. So my feeling is that we are, the, the, the innovation, and, and I, I agree with a lot of the, um, the, the panelists and those who have contributed, that we, look, we need to innovate as how do we do things in a different fashion. Mm -hmm. So that the land we have, which is, it, it, fortunately, every Tanzanian can own a piece of land, but still, if you, you own in a segregation, in, in, a, in a fashion which is disintegrated, it, it does not pay so much. But how can we use the land in a different way uh, so as to create um, and empower our people to, to, to create their own, to create money, to, to make money and, and live better, get better housing and, and all that. There's a the problem that you say, okay, land, the, the land you will need the equipment, yes. It will need, you, you need to have irrigation systems to be sure that you can get a, a bank loan. But I think there are many things which we can do on the land which may not be so much um, affected by even by, 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 by climate. If we, we plant the trees, for example, you can even sell the, 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 the carbon. But if you plant trees, you are sure that in a lot of places you can plant certain types of trees. But still, the question of people wanting jobs, they need to be organized. The only thing which lacks at the local level is that the, the youth, the, 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 um, the illiterate guys, some guy, now, now everyone is somehow illiterate, is, is somehow illiterate. But how do we organize our people at the local level, at the grassroots level, so that they can feel that they, are, they, can, get, they can employ themselves? Or we can help them employ, we can even employ them on the, the same land which they feel that they, they cannot use at all. I was thinking that if at the local government level, we create a champion um, business people, champion uh, invest farmers who can organize these, these people in groups. And we can, they can even get bank loans uh, for, for the working capital part so that they can even be paying salary to these people. And you are sure that within three months, if you are planting maize, within three months you are going to harvest and if you have a market, but you have to, of course, you must have a market. And markets will be easier to find for cultural products. It's easy. You can actually organize it very well for export. And once you are guaranteed with markets, then you are sure that you can organize these people and they will farm. They, they will employ themselves in their own land. Or you can even put them into a, a common plantation where they can produce this uh, at a standard which is required by the importers or in the urban markets. Then you will be paying these people a salary of a um, very small salary, which will keep them alive while they are waiting for the production to come up. But within three months, then you are, you are able to repay the loan, you, which you have been um, using as working capital. You pay, and still you have a surplus. And that surplus can be shared across the members of that group. It's not, it's not a self-help help group per se, but it's actually a business group, which is organized and, and probably is managed by someone who is a professional farmer. Uh, we used to have, and, and, and then others will join in as outgrowers and all that. So, so within a, 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 the, the ecosystem of uh, such uh, plantations, you are going to be able to pull people around the, 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 the original promoting group, and they will make money. So I think there are many things which, um, the question which uh, the, 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 the chair had raised about innovation, is, uh, is, becomes very pertinent, that how do we do things different? What is a, a constraining these people from getting employment, from creating jobs for themselves, from creating, uh, from, from producing things for sale? It's, it's markets, it's, it's funding. Funding can be f gotten from banks once they are organized properly. They can even get a, a guarantee from the, 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 the government or from the local government by issuing, by, by, by issu I think some banks will, will ag agree to take local government um, guarantees, and they will get funding which will uh, help them run, and they will, be, they will feel employed. They will feel employed, and, and, and then they are also ensured that once they have produced, if there is a surplus, it will be distributed back to them as, as part of their um, bonuses. They get bonus, but of course, the, the one who is the, is the, real, the manager, or the, the general manager of that particular group, will, will also be getting a salary, but, but Everyone has an incentive to make sure that it works. I think that's one thing I, I, I would imagine that a local government authority can easily, can easily manage without much um, 
dependence on the central government because you, you, you can get access loans. The only thing you need is to get a, a, an approval from, a, from, from, the, from the ministry responsible for you to borrow from, um, from a bank. And, and this can also be done by the entrepreneur, the one who is going to co constitute the group. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your name, please. My name is Lucas Katera from Repoa. And the one is taking forward the point that was raised by. <laughs> type of technology should be discussed when talking about creating employment, because some of these technologies will actually affect employment. But of course, it's important to appreciate that the world is moving very fast. Therefore, you can't do without. So the most important thing, I think, is to think of how to integrate the modern technology, the local technology, in a simple way that can be assimilated by the local people and used as an opportunity to generate income and opportunities at the local level. So that's one thing. But the other thing is about, which we also discussed yesterday on the similar parallel session on local economic development within the national context. You know, most of the literatures in the local economic development are dominated by the North. And these countries have their different traditions. I mean, these people from these countries are, are common people coming from common traditions. Countries are quite small. Therefore, you can talk on the national priority on, on local economic development at the national level. But then countries like Tanzania are slightly different. And those of Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, they are quite big and there are a lot of diversity within the country. Therefore, if you have to, dis to discuss local economic development within the context of the national level, actually we may miss some of the things. That's why, for instance, in Tanzania, we're talking about 10% of the income generated by the local from the councils to be shared by youth for the purpose of improving productive activities for the local uh, youth and the women. But then you think of the situation of the 10% of Ilala Municipal Council and the 10% of uh, Mwandri's Kaliwa Council. And then at the same, uh, uh, having that in place and the thing that you have empowered people, actually the difference is so huge between the council. Mm -hmm. So it's important to discuss <coughs> the local economic development within the country context, taking into account the local situation of the areas we are, we are discussing. So it's important to look, to, de to redefine local when you are talking of economic development in a bigger country like Tanzania, how local is local, but then generalizing something at the national level, think that it helps everyone at the local level, sometimes may mislead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Next question, please. Mr. Bay. Thanks very much, Chairperson. My name is Pascal Mio from Repoa. I have three comments. Number one is about skill formation that is relevant to local development. And uh, there is a lot of research going on at the moment trying to refine and redefine relevant skills for local development. But what is worrying, and I think uh, Madam Ave Maria has said something about it, is that in uh, all these folk development colleges in uh, TVET training, we still recycle the same skills that are super saturated all over, that some of the people who have been trained on these skills are already unemployed. And we don't look for relevant skills in a connection with what uh, Dr. Lucas Catera said. We are not looking and focusing at skills which are relevant to the local level. We have fishing, we have uh, agriculture, we have uh, horticulture, we have uh, a lot of silviculture in the localities but the TVET system is still oriented towards formal employment. And we have to, re to re adjust and reorient skill training to the relevant skills that I are relevant to the economies. And this cannot be determined by national mm -hmm. curricula per se, but curricula which is localized and specialized according to local needs. That's number one. Number two, I would like to seek guidance from experts on, on devolution, including the research, report team which is doing research on devolution. There is a crisis of, there is some sort of a disconnect or conflict between registration of businesses and taxation. And uh, some businesses tend to register in other localities and 
they invest in a set in next uh, in other localities mm -hmm. and this creates discomfort in the host localities that people are paying tax in the in the other municipality or nearby local authority but they are grazing on the resources of of a particular host locality an example is muranga muranga i mean, sorry not muranga mukuranga district here in mukuranga the most, you know, the coast region is leading now in the in the, in Dar es Salaam. In coast region, in, is leading in the number of people who are investing in that region. But most of the investors are registering in Dar es Salaam, and the TRA has not decentralized its activities to to mm -hmm. Mulanga, and therefore most of the revenue is going to another district and people localities local authority people in Muranga are not saying it very openly but they are complaining that yeah we are hosting but the resources are going to other so i think this could be an artificial problem a complaint by disgruntled people but it needs investigation and there is need for the devolution of registration and taxation to the local uh, entity number three and final is the question of amphibian entities we are, as we grow, and now we are building EPZs, we are building, uh, expanding infrastructure, we are likely to have entities which cut across localities. Airports, for example. The, you find that the airport of the of internet, Mwarim Nyerere Airport, used to be very far from the city center. It is still growing. Mm -hmm. There might come a time where it might grow across uh, local authorities. And it is a, a major generating, uh, resource, a resource generating entity. I'll give you a, a particular example. Nairobi, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport is in Machakos District, Machakos County. Mm -hmm. And Machakos started when they devolved, Machakos started claiming it, that it belongs to Machakos County. The government had to intervene and say, no, this is a national entity. And uh, Mombasa in, in Kenya, Mombasa port, has been a rallying point for the so-called Mombasa Republican Council, which want to secede, because they see it as, the, as a resource which, if they control, they can cut out the rest of Kenya and control the rest of Kenya. So, you know, such uh, amphibian uh, entities which belong to more, which are actually supra-local and supra-regional, in the discussion of devolution and in a futuristic fashion, we have to look for ways of how we are going to handle these entities as they expand, Mutwara gas and all these things we are, we are developing. At one time, there'll be mammoth, mammoth organizations cutting across localities, causing conflicts, and generating also claims to sovereignty by those who would want to secede. This is a futuristic question, and I hope the devolution people can also give me some guidance if I'm confused about it. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Kalumio. <laughs> Pascal Mio. Next question, please, Professor Kamuzola. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Faust Kamuzola. I am a regional administrative secretary, Kagera region. Uh, the question on um, uh, uh, some of the issues we have been talking about, but now let us uh, let me just address a bit on. Um, aspect of unemployment. And uh, again, to me, it's a big issue. Yesterday, I was uh, privileged to, to visit one of the poster uh, presentation there. The, the, some of the information I received was quite pertinent. The gentleman uh, did his study on looking on the uh, cell, uh, education for self-reliance in uh, some of the primary schools where he went. And you found uh, it's received very negatively. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think there is a, a huge point to, to take note. Mm -hmm. Our education has become so elitist. Uh, anybody who goes to school thinks uh, of employment mm -hmm. and some of these other skills not to be quite relevant. And I hear as many times most of us talking our education system should educate uh, uh, the students to be uh, job creators, mm -hmm. 
uh, self-employment. But sometimes maybe we don't go very far. Who is going to teach them job creation, mm -hmm. uh, self-employment, uh, self when us who are teaching, we are employed? Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I think uh, we need to look back and see if the education system we are using today is fit for the purpose of today and tomorrow. Uh, I feel it's now time that uh, even the emphasis, my colleague, uh, Dr. Maria, I don't like to, to pronounce another name because uh, <laughs> I might end up in trouble. Uh, I, I think we have emphasized so much on secondary school Probably we need to shift gears to TVET. Mm. Actually now, somebody with a, a specialized diploma is far better off in terms of getting jobs or even creating self-employment than a graduate from a university. So probably we need to take stock and see if uh, the education today is saving the purpose of today or tomorrow. The, the, the mentality we have created for some of, uh, most of our uh, school leavers mm -hmm. actually is not good and is not proper to see somebody graduate waiting for a job for some of them six years. Eh? Mm -hmm. And actually some of our, pa some, we are all parents here, most of us. Eh? Uh, you, it's very scary because look, you have, you have a young man or young lady in your house, in your home, and waiting for a job which for sure is not there. And uh, I know it's a big problem because some of our students, you find them uh, three, four years, they're still looking for jobs. So probably we need to, 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 to really see on how we can use the, uh, the, the, the available opportunities in our areas, regardless of the level of education, uh, somebody could just whatever degree you have, but mm -hmm. if it is farming, you can farm. If it is, uh, because there's a saying that if you, you, are, you, you are a good pilot, you can be a co pilot as well. To me, what I'm trying to say is uh, having a degree should not buy you, should not restrict you to do other. Uh, small, small jobs. Maybe you, you should aspire, you should do them uh, even better than somebody who doesn't have a degree. But now, the case in point is somebody might sit there from morning to evening waiting for the job and while the age is going up. No, now, I mean, the, the last point is, to me, again, uh, as far as education is concerned, we know for sure the skills which are required tomorrow today and tomorrow. One of it, I'm sure most of us don't even comprehend about it. I talked about it just a bit yesterday. Unless we try to teach our kids uh, programming, the digital divide which we are creating, because some of the, of the, of the countries that are teaching their kids from the, actually you know the mind of young people, they can catch anything provided you teach them well. But if we leave them to the end, all other countries which have started now uh, teaching their coding to, 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 to their young kids, they'll continue coding and will continue being, uh, uh, using their, 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 their products. It's for, for those who have not had a bit of a, a, a background on, on a programming, is not as difficult, it's just another skill which can be taught at any age. And in fact, it is said, if you want to enjoy your life, at, it doesn't matter at any age, even self, teach yourself on how to code some small, small things. It's a way of thinking which is uh, anybody can learn and appreciate, because if you are using this phone, there's so much which is going on, but it has been, it's just a matter of coding. Writing, uh, you, uh, uh, pre preparing the hardware is the easiest way, but 
having the program, the applications. Our, now, because we don't have a lot of jobs here, mm -hmm. if the kids were to be taught uh, programming, one, a few, might write their applications, sell them on um, Apple mm -hmm. stores, sell them on um, Google store and whatever. But we need to diversify so much that anybody with a talent of coding should be given a chance. Anybody with a talent of fishing should be given a chance. But as, as, as one of the contributors said, if we are keeping recycling the old, uh, the old uh, skills, whereas the world is moving so fast, the fastest growing uh, segment is the fintech, the financial technology. We have very few people here in Tanzania who have started some of their small companies on that regard. And the area is so big. So for me, I think uh, we need to seriously look on what others are doing and follow them. The Chinese are ruling the world today and tomorrow thanks for their skills in programming when it comes to big data analytics, which again is something of a fourth uh, industrial revolution, we cannot just look by whereas where, where some of the, of the revolutions were needing a lot of uh, resources, a lot of money, a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. This is just using the, 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 the human capital, the brain. So again, we need to invest in a few people and start doing what others are doing. Otherwise, we we'll always maybe complain or be left or something like that. This might take I'm sure maybe I'm, I've created another, another confusion, but this is my, my contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Is there another question? Oh. Professor Nyamsogoro, I don't know. There. Thank you very much. My name is Ganka Nyamsogoro from Zumba University. I have a contribution on unpacking potentials with a specific focus on uh, the theme, innovating and adopting national policies. I was thinking, and this is where probably training institutions and repower could come in. If we could, if each local authority could study local environment and identify opportunities. Study the local environment, identify opportunity, for example, what are available law, resource, law materials? Mm -hmm. When you travel from Dar es Salaam to Dodoma, for example, around Gairo, you'll see a lot of potatoes. Potatoes are good raw materials. Now, what opportunities are there with potatoes? What policies are there to support? Mm -hmm. What kind of... Um, customization in the policies do we need as it was rightly said by other contributors it may not be possible in this country as big as it is to have one policy which fits all environment now what kind of policy do we have and what kind of customization is necessary what kind of technology is affordable and applicable and whom should we engage? Whom should we engage? These are key questions that may facilitate value addition and adding uh, productivity and therefore achieving what we call local economic development. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Nyamsogoro. Another question there. At least I'm not tired of raising my hand, and uh, maybe I'll pull up my head, maybe someday I'll be a professor as well. Uh, my name is Aaron Peter. I'm from Equino, Tanzania, but sorry, this is my own opinion, not my company opinion. Yeah, yeah I would like to, 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 to add somewhere. Uh, I know there were a lot of topics, but uh, when it comes to local content, I mean in local government and employment cash flow. So local government as it's the only, that's an entity, but what I know, 
first priority work of the local government is provide the services, yeah? But uh, not all sub-entity of the local government provide the services. For example, yes, there is community development department, there is the social welfare department. Yes, they, they, they assist for welfare of the society, but as well, they can do more than that. Mm -hmm. So I would like to talk to community development department because those are responsible for development of the district. So, what I see, there is a challenge of skilled people in those positions, but not everywhere, but some. And, um, you know, for those who are really community development officers, there is a so-called community need assessment. So you cannot generalize the whole entire community of the district. At least each community, they have specific needs. So there is so-called community need assessment of which can provide the answer which community wants to. And uh, need from one community to another differs. So if they use well the skills they have, I'm sure development can come. And this is observable when you're attending an analysis you find that uh, there is a lot of local product and uh, it is assisted by these guys from local government authorities. Mm -hmm. Honey, production, I don't, a lot of, I cannot mention them. So you find that in some districts, these peoples are working very good. So there is a challenge of people who can do what in each district. I'll give you one example. <clears throat> we were implementing one project, so-called Kijana Jiajiri. So it was a very good project in Lindi, and um, it was about uh, selecting youth, training them on business management services, and then mentoring them, attaching them to mentors, and then at the end, you link them to the financial services. And uh, some, somewhere at the end of the project, we trained a certain number of youth, and the DC was there, he was like, okay, how many did you train? We said, okay, this number. He was like, okay, I want to take them and link them to this is President Trust Fund, yeah? I assure you today, I offer them they're in business. So local business, I mean local government authorities, if there is, well-skilled people knows what best they can do to bring development in certain categories of community. They can do better. Today, those people are in their business, as employed even their fellows. Mm -hmm. So there is issue of people in, 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 in local government authorities. As well, there is a challenge of capital. As well, we all know the budget going there is very minimal in such a way that you cannot do everything. But local government, they are willing to do some economic activities for those people around them. Again, we are, there is this uh, project. It was supposed, I mean, uh, sponsored by European Union. Youth Economic Empowerment, in short, year. So they analyzed certain groups of youth attached in certain economic activities, painters, computers, and so forth. They were trained in the formal way, and they were given tools of labor. It was the local government and European Union and others. Now, those guys, they are informal, and uh, they are competing from, in, in some of tenders, in their local levels, and they are doing better. So taking that a few examples, you may find that, yes, local government, they can do better, but if they have skilled manpowers and uh, capital as well. Yes, coming to policy, some policies are very good. For example, I take one, mining policy. In mining policy allows the local government to reserve a land 
for mining activities. And this is happening. You see salt extraction, mining, that's part of mining for sure, gypsum, but it is like we, we have selected some of minor mining activities. But at least currently it's happening in mining, especially diamond, you find that some regions reserved part of their land for small miners. Thank Everywhere you, Mr. now, Aiden. small miners, small miners, small miners. Thank you, Thanks. Mr. Aiden. Okay. Maybe because of time, it's not on our side, and I think people are expecting to have their breakfast. We will quickly respond to a few questions, and you'll continue discussion while you're having breakfast. Who would like to respond to any of the raised questions? Yeah, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Semakaf was making a very valid point here, mm -hmm. uh, showing how important it is to invest in agriculture. Uh, because we have uh, the population in Tabora, about 87% of our people are people who accrue their income out of agriculture. So if you're talking about uh, GDP, uh, um, we, 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 we almost have 4 trillion T shillings, and we are 2.7, you see, million people. If you want to come out with the income per capita, is everybody who takes about 1.5 million T shillings per annum. And we are contributing to the national GDP about 3%, and tobacco, of course, ranks the highest. Dr. Kime, you happen to know that. So if we're told you, are, you have that richness, and it is not originating from agriculture, which is the main employer, then it is a contradiction. Because you have the economic growth around there, but you don't have the economic development. Secondly, and equally effective to mention here, is she, she talks about the idea of investing in education, curriculum development, and all this kind of a thing. When we have sector ministries, the Ministry of Education for that matter, and the Ministry of Local Government in the President's office, what is the arrangement? The Ministry of Education would go for policy formulation, would go for quality control, and all this kind of arrangement. And when it comes into the president's office, local government, you're talking about operationalization of that. So this is the way they go about it. Then if one phase, then of course, if you think of going back, then that would be the arrangement of the, the, the one who brought this kind of uh, arrangement. Dr. Kme, you talk about the idea of thinking differently. I was in Israel. And then Israel got her independence, I think, in 1947, if I'm not very much mistaken. And they have fought since then until today. You, you know what happens with Israel? Once a kid is born, is registered as a soldier. It is the smallest country you can ever think about. And if you remember their historicity, they got out of their country, all of them. And then I came out with a final question, which goes to what you are talking about, Dr. Kime. He said, um, you people, how have you managed to survive all these years, you see? I said, Mr. Mandri, look here. It is because we think differently. I got that one. I said, oh my God, this one is a weapon for me. We want to think differently in Tabora. We want to think differently. What, 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 what is it all about? If you don't think differently, if you think the old way of thinking, you'll never get out of the box. We got that, I'm glad now it has been repeated once again. I know you are retired, but we still use, still use, make use of you, Dr. Kime. We rapport, Dr. Mari, thank you very much. You brought us here so much so that we can think differently. You see, you see, the thing is, a population, if you read Malthus, can be either transformed into a liability or into an asset. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you see, in my area, when I look at people, sometimes I have my driver, I tell him, let's go this way, I don't want to meet my people there, because I know they are becoming a liability. But even the leadership around can become either a liability or an asset. Rapport is telling us, make sure that our people are becoming an asset. If we can do that, you can be sure we are going to win quite a lot. Let me finish. You talk about mechanized agriculture. 
If you introduce mechanized agriculture in Itabora, then you should also be, and this goes to Dr. Dr. Mari. Ma, by the way, Dr. Mari, you talked about a pair of shoes, I mean three of them, from a cow. Was it a mistake or what? I couldn't be. You will correct us, eh? you will correct us on that. You say, I couldn't follow a cow, you see skin. So now what are we trying to do? And this is applies to what Kimei is saying. In Sikonge we have one. So we think of having an industry, a small one, there in Sikonge. I'm finishing, madam. I can see you rolling your eyes. You see? <laughs> and Dr. Dr. Mari, we are coming with another one in Inzega. You are making a very valid point. You can't think of Tanga, Tanga, just Mari and this kind of a thing. We, out of that Yukwa, we have decided that we shall have an abatua at Nzega, whereby we shall take care of all these things. Because when I was, I was in Israel, we went into a kibuzin. A kibuzin is like a, a, a village, you see, whereby they utilize every component that comes out of that livestock. And today, when you talk about Israel, and when you talk about Morocco, and you talk about Egypt, they are the first in, in, in fruits, one of Zadisha Matunda all over the world, Mazuri. So we get that one and we shall involve you. When we call you, we shall call Dr. Kimei, Dr. Mari, say, yes, you have to come to Tabora so that you can make our, thing, our people think differently. Asante. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Um, I would like to respond to uh, to what uh, Madam Linda asked there before, what are, what, what are we doing today to promote LAD, especially with the 10%? Uh, so don't complain, but we still have work to do right now. What are we, are we, are we doing? I just, I just agree with you. This, in the country right now, this one, again, is not, is not um, an option. It is a law which has been passed by, by the member of the parliament. So the 10%, it's a law that the local government should just uh, put aside uh, every month, and every three months we just uh, disburse it to the to, to, to the to the uh, to the to the citizen there. Now, what what what, what in my experience I, I got is with this money uh, we, we need to monitor them. We are monitoring them very 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 close. And if we come to realize that the uh, women's or the girls they are able to return the money, but boys they don't re return it. That's 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 a big problem. What have come to experience? I don't know if the honourable regional commissioner will talk about it. But now what we do now to to, to do with that problem is we don't give them money. Uh, we just, we just um, see what are they doing and we buy to them uh, a simple technology for the particular activity which they are, they are doing. And it depends with the particular area uh, based to where we are. So we, we are doing very good on, that, on, on this particular area. Then maybe I can respond that way. But again, I just agree uh, the question with uh, Doctor, uh, my friend there, Doctor said he, he spoke about what is happening to uh, in Lake Region, now we have um, uh, uh, the industry in Tanga, in, in Tanga Region. I think this, this is where uh, a lot of people are speaking about to be creative, to be creative, and, and what I spoke about, the infrastructure, which is supposed to, 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 uh, to, 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 to change it. We are doing very well, but we need to do uh, another thing in the infrastructure, as what the Naibu um, Katumkwari Vesema. You know what is happening right now? When you want the local government to invest, then do we have the, the, the structure that allow us to monitor that investment? You see, now that's that, that where we go now. Do we really, uh, are we going to leave this um, investment under the leadership of the uh, council, uh, council chairman with the kind of education he has? Who is going to take care of that? These are the kind of questions I think we, we just we need to go through it and make sure that we have a proper structure when it comes to, uh, to local government authority so that we can just adapt this, what you have just said. And that's why we are here and we thank you, Rapport, for making us to be here. Maybe they can come out and advise the government to have a proper structure that can accommodate, accommodate this. Because in other countries, other countries, even the local government, they have their own companies. All the companies you see them here in Tanzania from China, they are government oriented. For example, in Henan, you can say company, they're coming for a particular local government in that particular country. So how are we going to link that with our local government? I think that's where we're supposed, we're supposed to go from, from, from here. 
we can have a lot of money to our to our to our local uh, councils. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Halifa. Yeah, very quickly, very quickly. Uh, Kwanza Kabisa, uh, I would like to thank you, Dr. Ave Maria. I'm also afraid to go to the second name. Is it Semakafu? Semakafu. <laughs> the second one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Asante Sana. Nikweli, it is a challenge to give this authority to uh, councillors, especially as we know their qualities, their level of education, and you know the power granted to them. It is challenge to give them all the authorities to decide. Na ungana na wewe. Lakini pia ni ungane na Dr. Katela. How local is local? This is also very challenging. Mm -hmm. You cannot compare Ilala and uh, Buhigwe where Honorable Obama coming from. The, uh, makusanyo yao ni milioni mianne kwa mwaka, Ilala bilioni ya sita, wale milioni mianne watoe 10% wapereke kwenye jamii, na Ilala bilioni ya sita wapereke kwenye jamii, tafauti ni kubwa sana. Ja, juzi kabla ya kuja hapa, the Dodoma City Councils came to my office. Wanataka ku extend uh, budget yao. The annual revenue for Dodoma City Council is 67 billion. They come to realize there is another 10, uh, 12 billion coming in. Ambayo ilikuwa awajayona awali. Wakati tunaongea hilo, tukakumbuka kwamba the revenue ya mkua mzima wa kigoma ni billion kumina moja. Yani Dodoma wanaongeza extra money about uh, 12 billion which Kigoma region cannot collect, collect all of it. Sina kika uh, uh, mapato ya mkua mzima wa mkua wa mze wa uswe kandani kule kwa mkua mzima wa kusanya kiasi gani. Kwa hiyo, kwa watu kama Dodoma wakitua 10%, sometimes it's a huge money, they can even open a bank. Lakini kwa cancel kama Buhigwe, 4% ya 4 million is to be distributed to like uh, 26, 26 uh, uh, ward. See, ni elandogo sana. Wala wezi kuona effect. Ndiyo pale unakuta ma vikundi vinapewa laki nne, laki mbili. Wezi even kumpa kundi kimoja milioni moja. Ngumu. Kwa hiyo hiyo na, na ungana kabisa. Dr. Kimei, I appreciate uh, the way you translate the innovation, doing things differently. I, I, I took your comment and I'll share with my fellow directors. Uh, they have to do things differently. Yes. Dr. Pasco Mhio uli zungumzia swala la changamoto za almashauri uh, the company uh, registered in Kinondoni and have business in Mkuranga or in Arusha. Uh, this is one of the challenges, but not in uh, all sectors. Uh, as a country, we have the uh, Financial Act and for local government, we have a local government financial memorandum, which is stipulated clearly on how to deal on this matter. The uh, revenue which is supposed to be collected on this matter is service levy. And service levy is collected in a community affected by the project. We have challenge in telecom. Unakuwa na mnara kondoa wakati kampuni Vodacom iko ubungo head office. Haujui how much money has been generated kwa minara sita ili ukopo kondoa. Ambayo, right now, uh, uh, wanaitwa nini yao? Regulatory authority. Wana, they are working on this matter. Lakini for construction company, the company which is registered in Kinondoni, which have the office in Masaki, come to Kondoa to construct a road. For that, it is easy for me to collect a service levy, which is 0.03% of the total value of the contract. There should be no problem on this matter. Okay. Lakini pia uh, kuna swala la, 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 la uh, community needs assessment. Amongea kaka pare nizuri. Kweli, the community is diverse. Even within one region or one district, there is a big difference between the urban and the marginalized area. I accept that. Na tutaichukua, tutaichukua hiyo. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity to respond to these few questions. Thank you. Thank you. Just to add there. You also have the corporate social responsibility, mm -hmm. which, which, which is another way you can tell that one you're talking about. The proper tax now goes to Tanzania Revenue Authority, which was part of it, and we would have captured that one very well, you see. So, so, so this, is the, this is the way you could go about it and see, and the law is now there, that at least you have to, to, to contribute towards uh, that area which is affected by that, by that one. 
so, sorry kabla ya kumaliza uh, nilitamani i would want to, to appreciate uh, lectures which were given yesterday by dr mushi honestly the way he spoke as if he was his, among the directors of local government authority he knows exactly what happens in the local government authority thank you very much dr mushi i need to comment on this thank you thank you mr george though most of the questions were really localized yeah. but probably you, you may want to react to any of them no thank you very much uh, chairperson maybe my response will be more on reinforcing my message uh, when i listen to all the points raised i think there's a need for greater clarity on the on the ability of local government to be empowered to play its rightful role and and that really uh, rest with the constitutional architecture of the country so what status do we need to give to the local authorities? Uh, because linked to that is certainty on the revenue raising capacity of the local state. So without certainty on that, you will always have limitations because it, it is not linked properly to predictability of resource flows and functions. And I can tell you that even in our own case, we might have a very clear framework, but you always have contestations between and amongst the spheres about how best to empower local government. And even national government will use excuses and say, no, they don't have capacity. Uh, how will they have capacity if you don't empower them? <laughs> because there is a dialectical relationship between capacity and responsibility. Until such time that you assign specific responsibilities to the local state, you will continue to argue that they don't have capacity. And uh, correspondingly, you don't take active steps to provide such capacity. So it's very important that we have that uh, as part of the, the bigger conversation uh, to make sure that we don't have an ad hoc approach to issues of decentralization and devolution. It's a structured approach, but of course it will be informed by contextual realities of the country. It's not a panacea for everyone to say this model will work here. The contextual issues will always inform that, but you need a very clear development framework, a very clear devolution framework and decentralization framework that can be predictable, but it takes into account uh, uh, the evolution of the country. The second issue is around um, uh, the need to share ideas with each other. Uh, knowledge exchange is very important. I think Repoa is one of those uh, key institutions that is responsible for mining of uh, intelligence. The key issue is packaging that and disseminating it amongst local authorities. And one of the key instruments that we can also use is the instrument of peer review mechanism. So when we are able to say Dar es Salaam um, is here on the speed of decision making for investments, but where is another city? How do we compare and rate to each other? But if we have a peer review mechanism, we can be able to check the degree to which we make decisions on issues of governance, on issues of uh, investment flow, and also on issues of accountability. Uh, because many of the time you'll find that the contest that we always have, we get criticized as local government, and sometimes justifiable so. Uh, so we can't only say national government must do this. Sometimes we do very bad things. So the issue around uh, fighting maladministration, fighting corruption is very, very central to eat the image of any institution and how we are being viewed by others. So if we take active steps to fight maladministration, fight uh, corruption, uh, it becomes easier than even for investors to want to come and uh, work closely with us. The last issue is around informal, informal uh, uh, trade in our spaces. It's very important that we have a firm understanding of the space economy. 
what are the contributors to our space economy, and how do we want to recognize informality as a central pillar of economic um, uh, vibrancy in our space. And our role as local authorities, likewise, if we have a very clear local economic development plan, we must be able to build staircases between the formal economy and the informal economy and remove barriers that make it difficult for the informal economy to thrive by providing requisite support, regulatory, key instruments, as well as the physical infrastructure to make sure that uh, people uh, can trade under decent conditions to make sure that they can graduate from livelihood economic participation to contribute to the uh, linkages with the established economy that is normally uh, referred to as, 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 as formal. The issue of unlocking land is very, very important. Uh, we are also having that debate in South Africa, uh, which is a very topical debate at the moment in terms of um, our own reality. We don't have uh, a fair land distribution system in our country, but local authorities, at least where they have land, they also have powers to make sure that they can dispose of land. They can also unlock land for economic opportunities. We have, um, I think, applicable models elsewhere in the world that we have also examined. And in our own policy for financial and investment, we have what we call land value capture. The ability to target certain areas, provide investment as local authorities to make sure that uh, in subsequent stages, you can improve the value of that land and therefore have multiplier effect and also raise uh, the property values that you can then, through taxation, local taxation, uh, derives uh, forms of revenue. So in all, it's about systems, it's about strong governance, it's about appreciation of your limitations and make sure that governance and leaderships goes beyond those who are inside but work collaboratively with many other partners. And then we can have uh, linkages uh, right across with the national vision of the country to make sure that local authorities contribute sustainable to building confidence to investors, but at the same time plug in communities to make sure that we promote inclusive communities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. George. So, if we don't have more responses, I can Thank, I would like to thank all the participants, the panel members, and the um, member on the ground for your lively discussion. And in short, what we have discussed is on um, what we have identified as what is it takes to achieve local economic development and what hinders Tanzania to do so. One of the issues that has been raised is the um, limited power to hire and fire professionals by the local governments. But again, there was issue of capacity and people are feared that this power can be misused by the local government. But again, local economic development can be achieved if and when we can study local environment and identify opportunities and policy to support them, localization of said policy and room to engage. Revenue sharing between them and among local government was also raised some people are concerned that you may find that one person is residing, say, in Kuranga and working in the city center, and most of the revenue is paid to the Daresan, not in Kuranga. And that was the question on how to distribute and share revenues among and between local government authorities. There was also another issue on community development departments. One of the member raised the issue that this department, if it do its homework, it needs to empower locals through community development needs assessment. And there are some departments which, which are doing very well on that, and others can learn from, from each other. Again, the issue of mindset of young people was raised. And I remember Honorable Mwari said that opportunities are not offered, they have to be grabbed. So the youth have to change their mindset because now they have to fight to create jobs. 
because employment is not guaranteed. Formal employment is not guaranteed. And there was the issue of guideline. There's, so far, there's no guideline for local government to create employment. And there is initiative by the government to review the decentralization by devolution, where the issue of local on how local government can create employment is also part of the, the review. But again, local governments should identify their own constraints and remove them instead of complaining. For example, how long does it take to get a um, business permit? So those kind of things, if they are taken care of, local government can, can achieve local economic development. Another issue which was raised by our brother from South Africa is the constitutional status of local government, especially on the issue of revenue. We have been discussed on capacity, but capacity should not be an excuse for local government authority empowerment. It's a matter of chicken and egg, because what should come first, capacity or the autonomy of local government? So we need to think about that. So when we have our breakfast, we'll discuss more on these issues, because I remember one question from Linda who asked, how do you manage the practical question? How do you manage the 10%? Is it enough for women, youth, and people with disability? Thank you so much for participating in this panel, and I hope we'll have more discussion when we are having our breakfast.